Hello everyone and welcome back to Final Fantasy 16. This is episode 42. Returning to the game once again as a new DLC has released, The Rising Tide. It is time to take on the lost icon, Leviathan, in this new expansion. So, last time that we played this game was Echoes of the Fallen, and it was like a brand new dungeon and tower for us to go through to face off against the Omega Weapon. And this is apparently a little bit larger. So, we find ourselves back in the hideaway. Uh, we've got new items to purchase with Karen, apparently. Ah, it's a dangerous world out there. Let's stock up while you... Uh, which I assume... Um, is going to be related to... Maybe orchestron rolls or something? We've got accessories that we don't yet own. Um, yes, here we go. Orchestron rolls. Final farewells. Land of icons. All is one. Hymn of the pen penitent. Logos. So, a few things to spend your gill on. Here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. It'd better all be here. You're rubbing me blind, you know. What else have I got to spend my money on, really? Uh, we still have our last elixir because we didn't end up using it against Omega Weapon, so we're at least sitting on it for this fight, potentially. You're not um, a better price than that. But I've, I'll You're stock up on blind. all of my healing potions and all of my tonics. You'll not find a better price than that. It'd better all be here. So that's probably what we need. And then we can go to our room, apparently on our reading table, is where we will find our quest. Unmarked and Dear Sid. From Famiel. This is actually Echoes of the Fallen. I didn't actually read this, apparently. I write you this note from Imperial Lands. Yes, I know we said we'd be going straight home, but a little detour to trade the trinkets we'd picked up on our travels for some trusty gill seemed in order. Give the elders something to soften the shock of losing the dust crystals like. Truth is, those crystals have long been a lifeline for our people, and though I may have been quick to comprehend your reasoning that they're naught but a tether to a sinking ship, humble country folk like mine are rather less receptive to new ideas. Wish me luck in turning them to the righteous path. P.S. In the unlikely event that we should find ourselves driven from our home at Point of Pitchfork, I trust you'll spare us a bed or three. The lads can sleep on the floor at a pinch. So we got a little bit of a correspondence there from Famiel from Echoes of the Fallen and we have unmarked Sid I shall not waste time mincing words Leviathan's dominant is in need of rescue and despite my innumerable misgivings about joining hands with an outlaw of the highest disrepute, the dame has assured me that there is none better suited to the task at hand. I dare not reveal more for fear this missive could fall into the wrong hands, but if what little I have penned here has kindled your interest, I bid you journey to the Vale in Northreach and inquire with one Layla. She will surely see you satisfied. Heed the mysterious request. Leviathan the Lost? But why now? After all this time? Why what now? No. Oh, I'm not sure you'd believe me if I told you. After all we've been through? I doubt there's anything that could surprise me at this point. <laughs> all right then. Rouse Joshua and meet me in the mess. We'll talk there. I see we're all here. So, what is it this time? I'm not sure yet. The letter delivered to my chambers omitted a few crucial details. Do we know its provenance? That was one of the details it omitted. But whoever the sender was, it seems the dame held them in high enough regard to point them in our direction. The dame? Well, she's not one to waste our time. It must be important. 
Important might be an understatement. If the letter is to be believed, Leviathan's dominant is in danger. And someone wants us to save him. Leviathan? So the Warden of Water has finally returned. What has it been? A hundred years? More. The lost Monica dates back at least that long. Even our venerable Lawsman would not have been so much as a glint in his father's eye when last the mighty serpent brought his crushing waves to bear upon the realm. But why the gap? I know it can be a few years before a new Dominant's born. But over a century? Should the Dominant of Water's bloodline have been severed somehow, it could have prevented a new Dominant from awakening. But if one has awakened now, he couldn't have chosen a worse time. Every nation in the realm has lost its Dominant. If word gets out that there is still one to be had, they will stop at nothing to claim it for their own. And the twins will be at war again, just when humanity most needs to come together. Did the letter say anything else? Only that if I wish to know more, we must meet in person. And that the Veil vale can arrange a meeting. Hmm. If nothing else, you can be certain it ain't a trap. <laughs> Famous last words. I'm coming with you. As am I. Thank you. Both of you. And Otto? Yeah, yeah. I'll keep an eye on things here. Didn't fancy coming anyway. <laughs> Thank you. I shall leave the Invincible in your capable hands. Nice. Quest accepted musical jingle. It feels so strange to return to Final Fantasy 16, like fresh off the heels of Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth. So we've just wrapped that up properly, and now we're going into this. <laughs> The Rising Tide. Find Layla in Northreach. Quest destinations for the Rising Tide are indicated with this symbol. After accepting the quest, current objectives are displayed in the to-do list on the right-hand side of the screen. Very good. Find Leviathan, yeah? So... You're off to the Vale, then. Try and keep your mind on finding whoever wrote that letter, eh? Oh, and, uh... Did you see the dame? Let her know I, uh, appreciate her reports. You let me worry about this place, eh? I can't tell you how nice it is just to see a Moogle that looks like this. <laughs> That's what Moogles are supposed to look like. Back again? Apparently I can ask Vivian about the Executors and the an Origin, but not about Leviathan. You need me. We'll see if Joshua and Jill have anything to say about Leviathan. Always good to check in to see if they've decided to add any new lines with them. How goes it, brother? Chroniclers of the Fallen. Speak of the Magitech War that took place prior to the civilization's fall. That entity we encountered in the Sage Spire, Omega, is doubtless one of the many Magitech weapons that the Fallen produced. Imagine it. Legions of such things being sent into battle against one another. It would be enough to rend the very skies. But perhaps we need not imagine it. Thousands of years after the fall, and still the nations of our fair realm made war with their icons. And for what? Dominance? Like our forebears, all that it brought us was death and devastation. Mankind's folly did not end with the Fallen's fall. The Fallen's fall. But it may yet end with us. For we go into battle wielding the greatest power in creation, not that of the icons or the Magitech, but the ability to learn from our mistakes. So it's cool that you can get some uh, Echoes of the Fallen... Uh, voice lines that I did not check in once we finished it. Does it not seem odd? 
that after an absence of more than a century, Leviathan should reappear just as you claim the power of the realm's final warden? Could this perhaps be a part of Ultima's plan? Shall we then? Because this is the other thing, is the Rising Tide DLC is not after the game. It is still within the context of the main story. It happens before you go to Origin. So they've like weaved it into that story. As much as I want them to continue so bad with more stuff in this world, uh, I'm just grateful that we've even gotten expansions. It's so fun. The hour fast approaches. Make ready. Make ready. He unfortunately doesn't have anything to say, and I assume the others won't either, because they're not directly tied to this. But Jill will. something wrong it occurred to me that my father once told me of a great tower just beyond the border which would one day be ours and thinking about it now he could have only have meant the sage spire i wonder what he would have done had he claimed it had he seen what we have seen the fallen mother crystal and, and omega. omega the pinnacle of our ancestors power the power that ushered them to their own destruction I never know what they are going to say in the sentence, because obviously they never say the whole thing. I often ask myself if the strength of our icons is the same. Is it too much for us to control? Is it destined to destroy us, as it did them? Mine certainly came close to destroying me. But you saved me. And now, with the strength of both our icons in your heart, you're going to save us all. The strength of both our icons in your heart is so nice. The world is ending. And here we are worrying that the realm will spend its remaining strength fighting for the right to claim a dominant. And for what, if not more bloodshed? Besides which, if it's true the dominant needs our help, is it not likely they've already been claimed? We should be okay. going, Clive. Time to go and find Layla in Northreach. Uh, so we'll head on out to the world map. I think a lot of people wanted uh, or like were thinking it could potentially be set after the main game when like the first images came out because it didn't have like the purple filter. <laughs> it's going to be one of the first things that you see in the PC release is like a mod to remove the purple filter. Fancy a peek behind the veil, my lord. And here's Layla. I'm looking for a Layla. <laughs> you found one. So, will your friends be joining in? Or just watching? Jill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not here for your services. We simply want to talk. What you do with your time is up to you. The price is still the same. <laughs> we hear about the letter. Oh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. I suppose you'll be wanting to know who wrote it then. Among other things. Look, I'm just the messenger here. There's only so much I can tell you. Specifically? A location, north of town, on the shore of Eilafeist Bay. There you'll find a tent and the woman who can answer your questions. And that's all? Nothing else? Actually, one thing. There's more than flowers in the meadows these days. So keep that sword of yours to hand. I just love Jill just staring at uh, Clive the whole time that <laughs> she's saying that. Few venture into the Royal Meadows anymore, so you won't be overheard. Does anyone else think it's strange that this woman should prefer to keep to the outskirts of town? Not if she realizes the value of the information she's party to. And the danger it puts her in. 
Are you here for conversation? Yeah, she's got the rising tide stuff. Forgive me, Clive. You doubtless have questions, but knowing what you know, I trust you understand why it would not do to speak of such matters here. Do as Layla told you. And should your curiosity be left unsatisfied, come and see me again. Should you need anything? Let us make for the coastline then. Do be careful. Gonna bring out my ambrosia. Now, oh, I'm gonna have to remember how to play the game as well. <laughs> this is gonna, this is the fun part of it being uh, not only like months between playing the base game, then the first DLC, and now the second DLC, is I've gotten used to playing uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth specifically, and now I'm gonna have to relearn how to play 16. So we're gonna have some teething issues as we get back into the combat, because we're diving straight back into it. The tent is where Layla said it would be. Yes, but who awaits us inside? Oh, you're not going to let me inspect while I'm on my chocobo. You have a rest. Hmm. It's empty. Why am I not surprised? Ooh, a ship. A boat. No prizes for guessing who that belongs to. Are still warm. So you're Sid. I suppose I must be, which means you have me at a disadvantage. Apologies. I am Shula, tributary of Mesidia, final haven of the Moats of Water. The Moats of Water. The very tribe into which it was believed Leviathan's Dominant was born. A people notable for their sapphire eyes and ivory hair. Yes, that would be impossible, since the tribe famously... Vanished. Was exterminated. <laughs> Despite the best efforts of both church and state, we are still very much alive. Though we've managed to keep that fact hidden from good Griegers faithful for over a century. Along with Leviathan's dominant. That wave out there, what do you know of it? The surge. Only that it's been there a long time. Since the fall of Drake's Eye almost a century ago. Some claim the two are connected, but none can speak with any certainty. So in other words, you know nothing. John Snow. Not that I'll hold it against you. The wave was raised by Leviathan in an act of rage. Moments before the waters were stayed, and the icon and its dominant bound within. And you want us to? Rescue him. 
Yes. You see, a little bird told me about a certain outlaw with a singular knack for putting unruly dominance in their place. And ours is about as unruly as they get. For years, we've searched for someone who could hold their own against an icon. Someone just like you. So what do you say? Will you help us? What exactly did your dominant do to warrant this punishment? What did he do? He committed the greatest crime one of his kind can. He was born. But he deserves a better fate than the one my people forced upon him. He deserves to be free. As do we all. Very well. Far-fetched though your tale may seem. Something tells me you speak in earnest. So we will do what we can for your dominant. But first, you will tell us everything you know about him and the means of his imprisonment. I can do better than that. I can show you. Care to take a trip across the bay? My people await you there. Lead the way. It's awesome that we're finally getting the lore on this frozen wave. We're gonna go rescue the Avatar who's frozen in the water. That's really, really cool. Okay, you get to see that on there. Sail to Mycidia. The Lost Cloak. If you manage to navigate the cloak's narrow mountaintop pass without plummeting to your death, you'll be rewarded with a breathtaking view of a blighted wasteland stretching from uh, oil-faced bay to the Sea of Grace. Let us travel to new lands. All right, you might want to hold on to something. We're coming up on the wall, and passing through can take a bit of getting used to. I don't see any wall. Of course you don't. That's the point. It's a glamour woven by our ancestors to keep mm. our village hidden from prying eyes. But don't take my word for it. Watch. Oh, wow. This is cool. Slug of Bacchus wine. Clive, the sky. Oh, it's there you go. Right. How is that possible? You do know what a glamour is, don't you? Ours just happens to work both ways, and a good thing too. I wouldn't fancy staring at those sickly clouds every day. Title card, The Rising Tide. God, it's been nice to see an actual blue sky again. So it's a glamour, which means anyone who walks out of that glamour would be like, oh, God, what's the weather like? <laughs> Why does it look like this? And that concludes our little voyage. We're here. It's a long slog to the village, and a hard one. I uh, hope you're up for a climb. Now 
I hear that they've released an update for the game around the time this came out as well, which has tweaked a bunch of iconic abilities, so I don't really know what's changed, so we'll kind of figure it out as we, we go along. But I haven't really looked into it too much. <sighs> Finally. What? You didn't think we'd arrived, did you? The village isn't up here. It's on the other side of the mountain. Of course it is. Okay, homecoming on cloak top. So we've got another obelisk. Mysidia. Maiden's March, Father's Fell, Tailwind Bay, and Rivers Meet. Let's have a look around a brand new environment of uh, not so blighted lands at all. Watch yourself, Sid. This path can be treacherous. If not for the sheer drop, then for the beasts who prowl it. Thank you for the warning. And please, call me Clive. Sid is an alias. You will be pleased to learn, Lady Shula, that I have no such aliases. Is that so, Lord Margrace? It's all the same to me. Lord Margrace. <laughs> That's funny. I wonder if what types of enemies will be fighting here as well, if there's going to be some familiar enemies, probably, but new ones as well, I would expect. What fiends frequent these lands? Okay, time to remember how to play. Oh, will you now? Shall I keep my axe and spells to myself then? Spells, yet I see you carry no crystals. Since when did a bearer ever need crystals? But then, where is your brand? Waiting for me in Sunbreck, if I ever get careless. <laughs> then it's in for a long wait. Nice. Okay. Getting introduced to the combat once again. Having to remember my, uh,. My combinations, my icons, my abilities. And if I want to change them around or not. Plus, there's another dominant up for grabs. I know that there's been a few people that have kind of like replayed the We're whole game. At the summit. From there, you'll have a better view of our home. There's been a few people that have replayed the whole game on Final Fantasy difficulty in preparation of making it to this. So, be different levels of preparedness for this one. But as I didn't have the time for that, I spent 120 hours in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth instead. Few have ever set eyes on what I'm about to show you. Just so you know. This is not what I expected. Welcome, my friends, to Mysidia. Oh, wow. It's been a long time since I saw the North looking so... so... Alive. How I'm is... sure 
you have plenty of questions, but it's been a long journey, and I expect we could all do with a rest. Our humble village is only a short way from here, if you'd care to accompany me. Let's get ourselves in front of a fire, and I'll tell you everything you need to know. Yeah, so many questions for a secret hidden culture for over a century. Look at this visual. It's beautiful, Shula. And we aim to keep it that way. It looks like there is, there's still fallen remnants and stuff that's overgrown. But is this all part of the glamour? You know what I mean? Like, is it all actual blighted lands in reality and we're just walking through, you know, an idealized version of the place? Or is there this weird illusion on the outside? Because I know that it's a glamour, so like, and that works both ways, so it's hidden. So I guess to people on the outside, it all looks blighted and gone. But I guess that, you know, maintains the illusion really well because it would deter people from even thinking of going this way. But if they've managed to, you know, keep this land looking the way that it does with everything else going on, I really want to know how. We'll find out more about their Mother Crystal situation too, I bet. Because I think a lot of what we were thinking about on the world map around the time of um, the base game was that Leviathan could have potentially been over here because we had like Odin and then the previous Mother Crystal that was over this way, you know, and like this could be Leviathan. But it looks like we've had Leviathan sealed up here with this wave and people were like trying to determine if this wave was... You know, because it's the northern lands where Shiva came from. They're like, was this like an element of the, you know, a previous battle with Shiva in the past? But now we're getting our answers. And that's fascinating there. I guess that's what's... stones glowing? That's one of the cairns which maintain the glamour. Stay well clear. Maintains the glamour, okay. I guess whatever's up there could be powering the... or like keeping the wave frozen, keeping the dominant imprisoned. What a shot. If the surge was an act of rage... One wonders what prompted it. I just love that it's like this frozen wave. The surge. thinking about uh, fighting Leviathan, I was like, oh, I guess I should prep my dominance accordingly, but then I remember that this game doesn't have elemental weaknesses. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about equipping anything like that.
It's a shame that we won't be getting any uh, Shiva um, moments with Jill because we have her iconic abilities. We're like taking that from her. Shiva had some moments. Themselves the mountain crossing by landing further north. In clear view of the bear. Shiva had a few moments, but I would have loved some more. Let's see what my exploration <laughs> rewards me with. We got another one of the glamour pillars. Bird. On evening tides. Does morning's light return? Open the gates! The tributary is home! Pretty. Size of that dog? All right now, back to your duties. You'll have to forgive my people their curiosity. We don't get many visitors. Or any, truth be told. Then we are honored to be the first. This is quite extraordinary. Like stepping into another world. So do you believe me now? You've made it difficult not to, my lady. But how did your people chance to settle here, in the north? Unless I am much mistaken, the moats of water long called the coasts of Southern Ash their home. Until Drake's horn fell and the blight forced them ever inland, where... We met our doom, along with our dominant. I see you've read the Gregorian Church's account, but perhaps you'd like to hear ours. That building over there is the Witten Hall. It's where my people gather to discuss matters of import. We can speak more inside, once the place is ready to receive you. It shouldn't take long, but you're welcome to explore the village while I see to things. Thank you. We'll do just that. Okay, visit the Witten Hall, but also take a look around the the village. Be them then. Don't look like much if you ask me. Recognize those markings? Oh, they got crops growing. 
stalks are thin, the leaves limp. We should dress the soil with dung and straw at once, or I fear for the autumn harvest. Just you stay away from that temple. Do you hear me? I heard you the first time. So it's a temple. I'm sorry, but I don't like it. Outsiders should stay on the outside. Intruders! We must flee. Intruders! Oh, do you think he baits? Who? The hound? Or his master? All right, ladies, I'm taken. All these northerners. Welcome to Haven. The tributary awaits you within the Witten Hall. I will be there in due course. Let us go in. Oh, yes. It's artwork on the wall time. So what do you think of our little haven in the woods? It might not have all the comforts of a southern settlement, but at least it's ours. And there's a lot to be said for that. It can't have been easy keeping this place a secret. Not easy, no. We've dedicated our lives to maintaining the glamour that conceals us. Us and Walius. This man, Walius. Is he Leviathan's dominant? That's right. Though he's no man, Walius is still a baby. Okay. A baby? Forgive me, but you said that the dominant and his icon were bound inside the Surge almost a century ago. That would surely make him older still. It would, if he'd been allowed to age. But the spell robbed the poor bairn of even that. I'm sorry. Walius was the son of my great-grandfather. Leviathan awoke within him almost immediately. But instead of allowing the lad to live out his life as a valued member of the community, my ancestors sought to put his power to other uses. Sadly for them, the Icon sensed their treachery and summoned a wave so large it would have swallowed the entire village if my ancestors hadn't stopped him. Then it is not the surge that binds the child, but time itself. Yes. Forgive me. I'm still not sure I understand. I'm not surprised. It isn't the easiest thing to explain. Which is why it might be better if I took you to see him. Show you exactly what he has to endure. That is why we came. Then let us be off. There's a road that leads north from the village. It'll take us right into the surge. So the temple's beam is like the ancestor's little answer to keeping the wave, the surge, frozen. God, that's hardcore. Are you bound for the wave, tributary? We are, Delina. Have you spread the word about our guests? I have. Everyone knows to treat them as family. You shouldn't have any trouble now, but just in case, I would have you accept this symbol of our people. <laughs> Even in a secret hidden society, we'll still get a medal. That's very kind. I look forward to meeting the family. The feeling's mutual. Should the tributary be indisposed, Feel free to ask me any questions you might have regarding the village, and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. We will. Then I bid you good tide. I need my Boy Scout scarf that has all my seals on it, dude. <laughs> A new quest. Our storehouse lies across the bridge. If you're short of supplies, you may find what you need there. 
though we will have to ask you for recompense, poor as we are. Yeah, that's the thing. How do you guys get money? Uh, it's the thought that counts and the pursuit of knowledge. Oh, we're going to have more stuff to read with tomes as well, aren't we? Hell yeah. Okay. New stuff. I want to go back inside so I can go and see this uh, mural on the wall. Can we do that? Nope, of course not. So you could see that Le Leviathan had like the baby. I was like, are they feeding babies to Leviathan? as like this, you know, child sacrifice thing, but no. There ain't no tantrum like a baby tantrum. There, that's why Leviathan's gonna have this primal rage to it when we fight it, of course. Because it's a baby. An ancient baby. Yes, my lord. So we've been uh, tasked with coming to this uh, hidden village to murder a baby. <laughs> my name is Delina. And I serve as adjutant to Lady Shula, tributary of Mycidia. While other adjutants who came before me played the role of guardian as well as aid, Lady Shula is an able warrior in her own right and requires no protection. So I assist her in ministering to our people's affairs while she is absent or indisposed. By way of example. It was I who informed the rest of the village of your coming at the tributary's request. If there is aught you wish to know of our people or our village, please do not hesitate to ask. As I'm sure you're aware. This land was once the domain of the Northern Thanes, though the settlement has lay, had laid abandoned for some time when our ancestors' wanderings finally brought them here. Remote as it was, it seemed to them the ideal place to settle, and they duly cast the glamour over it that their new home might remain hidden. The secret of the spell itself. <laughs> that, that text went small. <laughs> the secret of the spell itself had been passed down from generation to generation since the time we left Ash. We used it to disguise our camps that the custodians of the lands through which we wandered should not learn of our trespass. And it was these temporary enchantments which led our ancestors to contemplate a more permanent solution upon arriving here. So they built the cairns. Filled with all the shards of crystal the tribe could spare, and summoned forth a glamour large enough to cover the entire land. And for many days and nights thereafter, the bearers labelled laboured to attune the spell that the outside world might see this place slowly succumb to the blight. So it was not a blighted land when they had arrived, and then the glamour gave this illusion that it was slowly spreading to like... That's really clever. And thus we hid ourselves away. Welcoming none into our private haven. Until you, that is. At first, the spell only worked one way. It was only after the skies changed that we conjured a second illusion for the benefit of those inside. It was Lady Shula's idea. A salve for the nerves of those who feared the roiling storm clouds were a harbinger of the end. Okay, so when we first went in, I was like, man, people, if they ever went out, they'd be like, what the hell's going on? It's the end times. But they actually bear, uh, bore witness to it and then went, ah, we don't want any of that. Blue skies, please. I pray that it brings you a little relief from the darkness of the world beyond the wall as it has done us. Our story began. On the narrow coasts of Southern Ash, where, for want of arable land, we relied on the mountain rains to quench our thirst and the bounty of the sea to fill our bellies, and thus did we learn the value of water. After the fall of Drake's Horn. We spent decades in exile, drifting across the deserts and snowfields of the Twins, till at last we arrived here in Mycidia, our second true home. Here we found mountains, rivers, and seas, not unlike those of our first home in Ash, and that we lacked, all that we lacked was crystal. We have no mother crystal of our own here, nor have we ever received any stipend from our neighbors. Were it not for the few shards we had been able to stockpile during our wanderings in Storm, we might never have survived the first few winters, let alone cast the glamour that protects us. For to demand that the bearers among us sacrifice their lives for the benefit of the others was never an option. The hardships we had faced on our journey had brought us together, and we would not be divided again. Thankfully, our unity proved our strength. And so here we have stayed, dependent only upon the blessings which this land provides us. The spring, the rivers, the seas. These are all we motes of water need. Nice. Big lore drop there. Fare you well, my lord. 
when you see the text get really small, that's when you know. Uh, that's the first time that that's happened, I think. All right, we've also got side quests. Uh, Sid! Worder. You are Sid, aren't you? The man the tributary told us about? I wonder if you could help me. With what exactly? Oh, nothing too troublesome. Do you know my husband, Pavart? He's the village smith, among among other things. Anyway, his name day is not far off, and I wanted to make a gift for him. He's a craftsman, you see, and he's been fretting about running low on the flowers he uses for dye making, so I wondered if you might collect some for me and give them to him. Uh, would this gift not be better coming from you? Perhaps, but it can't, for reasons I can't go into. Please, I know it sounds daft, but I'd be ever so grateful. Well, all right. <laughs> Fine. Which flowers does your husband need? The sweet little blue ones that grow around the fount. Elder's blessings, they're called. We use them to dye our fabric so we always feel close to water like they are. You don't need to go to the trouble of picking them yourself, though. Just speak to the field hands and ask them to share their harvest with you. Two basketfuls should be enough for my husband to be getting on with. Two basketfuls it is. Collect flowers. See, Jill's clothing is uh, suitable to this place, as well as her hair and eye colour. She fits right in. <laughs> Hello there, I know that there's plenty of flowers around, but please, if you could give me yours. Give me. Excuse me. I wonder, might you be able to spare a basket of Elder's Blessings? Pavard's wife tasked me with collecting some for her husband and suggested that I speak to you. Ah. Werda wants you to bless her better half with the fruits of our labour, does she? Go on then. Give the old fool something to squirm about. I'm sorry. Ah, don't worry about it. An old fool Pavart may be, but if you come bearing gifts, he's not fool enough to turn you away. I'm glad to hear it. Thank you. Thanks, bro. The mirrors. My people believe they frighten off trespassing demons by showing them the evil in their hearts. Would you care to take a look? Yeah, you might see a big flaming beast inside of me. I got that dog in me. Ah, welcome to Haven, friend. Thank you. Forgive my presumptuousness, but the smith's wife has asked me to make her husband a present of some elder's blessings. Two basketfuls, to be precise. Well, I have one, if that's any help. It is. I'm much obliged. They really are beautiful. Aren't they just? Though that's not the only reason they have a special place in our hearts. Legend has it that when our people fled from Ash, the tributary of the time took some seeds with them. And as they wandered high and low across the twins, he'd plant them wherever they stopped for water. Every elder since has done the same. So when we finally put down roots here in Mesidia, the flowers did too. Well, that's two basketfuls. Oh, God. quick complete. Oh, okay. After completing the main objective of some quests, you may be given the option to quick travel to the quest's final destination. If you see a prompt in the lower right hand corner of the screen, Hold down the start button to immediately travel to the NPC eagerly awaiting your return. Nice. Now can they... Wee! Oh, it's like on a timer. 
Can they add that into Final Fantasy XIV, please? That would be great. The amount of traveling you have to do between quests. My lord. <sighs> what do you want? Your wife asked me to bring you these flowers. The elders' blessings that grow by the water's edge yield a lasting blue dye with which the motes of water are wont to stain their fabrics. This much is known. Quite why Werda, the wife of Haven's leading artist Pavart, needs Clive's assistance in restocking her husband's supply of the flowers remains a mystery. <sighs> that woman. Come out. I know you're there. Who? Me? <laughs> Would either of you care to explain what's going on? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to deceive you. It's just my husband can be a bit standoffish at times, and I thought this might be a good way for the two of you to get acquainted. What with you being a swordsman like and him? Being the only smith in the village? It'd be a shame if you couldn't turn to him for help. The only reason he couldn't turn to me for help is because I had my hands full with all the orders you lot dumped on me. I'm pretty much done with them now, though. But, for the record, the tributary said that we were to lend you outsiders our aid, and that's exactly what I was planning to do. With or without my darling wife's meddling. Still... Here we are, acquainted. So if there's out you need, just bring us the materials, all right? All right. All right, then. And tar for the flowers. I was running low. Tar for the flowers. You use them for dyeing, I hear. Aye. Crush the petals and it makes a fine and lasting blue. We use it to stain the cloth for our tunics and pennons. Remind us where we come from, like. As modes of water. Children of the sea. That's right. The pattern, too, was left by our ancestors. The ceaseless rill, it's called. It symbolizes the river of our tribe, with the strength of Leviathan running through it. And no matter how that river has ebbed and flowed, changed its course, the flowers have always been with us, growing on our banks. <clears throat> I should get back to work. If you need something crafting, let me know. I will. It was a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> Wasn't it just... The thought that counts. Reflection of Earth, Titanic Block, residual ether that, having failed to dissipate on the battlefield, has instead manifested into a solid form not unlike crystal, but with an elemental purity that renders it far more potent, if not highly specialized in its applications. Enhances ti Titan's iconic feat, Titanic Block, making it capable to block attacks from behind while restoring a small amount of the HP regain gauge. You ain't getting me from behind. So you can actually block when you're facing the other way. It's pretty sick. We don't have enough accessory slots for me to put that on, however. I don't think we'll change our arrangement. We can use the foundry, though. Reckon my steel's just as good as any. think there'd really be anything that we're doing here. Sorry, excuse my dog in the background, flapping his ears. Uh, I can upgrade my fallen belt. I do have that equipped with the, the fallen belt and living tissue. Will that do, yeah. Oh, I can also upgrade it again to a plus two with aqueous humors. I expect that I'm going to get new gear from this anyway, so... But sure. Better than you. There you go. Um, and you can't upgrade your equipped braces or your weapon. 
What is our equipment anyway? We've got the fallen bracelets, the fallen belt, and the Omega weapon. Okay. Another side quest. We have Bylos. Where in the blue heavens is that girl got to? Oh, I'll have her hide when she gets back. Oh, sorry. I was leagues away. How can I help you? If you're after something from the storehouse, it's actually my wife you'll want to talk to. She will have to charge you for the goods, though. Not that would fleece you or anything. It's just, you know, needs must. I understand. Saying that, she might not be able to get anything down for you for a bit. Ah, right. She's got her hands full with the inventory, you see. It should have been my daughter's job, really, but the willful little Rills decided to make herself scarce. Ah, the heavens only know where that girl's got to. If you'd like me to keep an eye out for her. Oh, no. I couldn't ask that of an outsider. Could I? <laughs> Could you I? wouldn't mind. It's like, wait, can I? Of course not. She won't have gone far, will she? I hope not. But I've scoured the entire village for her and come up empty-handed. <laughs> Can't help thinking she might have gone on another one of her little adventures. Ah. A free spirit, is she? Aye, that she is. Can't get her to sit still. Especially once you heard you lot were on your way. Outsiders! You should have seen her little eyes light up. Oh, if she wanted to watch you arrive, she'd have made for the low gate where you first came in. And the guard there might have spotted her. Maybe you could ask him. Uh, Ruka, her name is. All right. I'll let you know if I find her. Try not to worry. Ruka. Excuse me. You haven't seen the storekeeper's daughter, have you? Little Ruka? I have, as it happens. She went out through the gate not long ago. Out of the village? Alone? Aye. She does it all the time. There's a path off to the left which leads down to the river. Nice little spot, that. And safe as you like. The beast of the mountain don't dare come so close to the village. That's where she'll be. Go and have a look if you don't believe me. I will. I will. All right, off we go. Search for Ruka by the riverside. Looking everywhere for you. You must be Rooker. You know my name? Can you lot read minds? <laughs> Your father asked me to keep an eye out for you. You left without telling him where you were going. He was worried. But I went to look for you. Well, now you found me. What do you say we head back to the village and let your father know you're safe? All right. And on the way home, you can tell me all about the world beyond the wall. I want to know everything. <laughs> everything might be a stretch. Thank you for bringing her home. And uh, sorry for the trouble. Oh, no. It was a pleasure. Daddy, did you know that there are villages ten times as big as Haven in the outside world? Ten times! Cities, they call them. And in these cities, they have great big walls and towers and castles. Oh, <laughs> to think I was worried. You can tell me all about the outside world later, sweet pea. Now go and help your mum with the stores. All right. Thanks for putting up with her questions. She, uh, has a lot of them. One of the big ones being, what are the people beyond the wall like? Reckon you've made a good first impression. Are we the only ones she's ever met? That you are. 
the rest of the world can't know we're here. So we'll have to be very careful who we're letting in and out. A few of us might make the occasional trip to shore for supplies, but for the most part, we'll make do with what we've got, including what the old northern has left us. Yes, you built on top of the old ruins, didn't you? Well, they make for fine foundations. Their masons clearly knew what they were doing. That's one thing we don't have to worry about. <laughs> oh, it's everything else that's the problem. Medicines, metals for tool making, anything like that. We have to dress up as traveling merchants and make a trip to the outside and pray to every cloud in the heavens that nobody sees through us. Uh, which explains why you need Gil. Aye. And now Rook is back, my wife should be free to assist you with any potential purchases. So please, do make good use of our stores, because we fully intend to make good use of your coin. <laughs> I'll be sure to keep my purse strings loose. All right, so we've unlocked the foundry and now we've unlocked the the shop. Ageless tallow, rendered from the fat of boar or bison, or in the case of Mycidia, chocobo or ibex, tallow is widely used in the manufacture of foul-smelling candles and oily soaps. Blacksmiths have also been known to employ the substance in the final stages of polishing steel. This particular sample appears to have been affected by a surfeit of ether, which has somehow slowed its degradation allowing it to maintain both its vibrancy and viscosity, despite having been left untouched for several decades. Even stores now available. All right. Short and sweet little side quests to give us a little more information around this place, and we get supplies. Thanks for bringing me daughter back. I don't grudge her looking for adventure, but she's got to pull away it like the rest of us. Anyway. Now we've got the inventory done, I can attend to my own tasks, like seeing to our visitors' needs. So, was the role you wanted? This, this is all we have. <laughs> me upgrading my fallen belt just to get a new waist cloth, there it is. <laughs> and it's better. It is suspected that the dye made from flowers known as Elder's Blessings grown in Mycidia not only gives the motes of water's clothing its vibrant blue hue, but that ethereal residue attributed to an ancient spell cast upon the land somehow increases the dye's permanence, which in turn renders the cloth applied thereto more resistant to both damage from external forces and natural degradation. A heart, while a fine place for fancy is nowhere to hide your purse. May it serve you well. And then we can also get the the arm ring. Upon their 16th name day, every moat of water is fitted with a hand-carved wooden torque that they will keep for the rest of their lives, a vestige of the tribe's long years of wandering following the fall of Drake's Horn, in which the loss of members was commonplace. The ring represents a singular bond between the moats that transcends both physical and spiritual distance. Know that even should you walk, uh, uh, know that even should you walk abyss, our hands will guide you home. Here you are. Okay, and a safe haven orchestra roll. And stuff. All right, then I bid you good tide. What do you think the tributary sees in those outsiders? Time to head down to the surge and see what it's all about. You're Lady Shooter's friend, aren't you? Lady Shooter says that if I want to be tributary one day, I have to learn my letters just like she did. But what good are letters against a Tombry's knife? Chocobos? Did you hear that, girl? You're going with Father today. If you don't mind, Amanda. Off to the surge, are you? Well, just you stay close to the tributary. We don't want you getting lost in the forest. There's a pair of ships just up ahead. Ships? But are we not still leagues from the shore? Huh. Yeah, look. Shipwrecks on land from where there used to be water, I assume.
The quickest route to the surge is due east, past the second galley. Shula, how did these ships come to be here? What do you imagine happens when an icon of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually. Really, brother, did you have to ask? Yeah, <laughs> Joshua. Don't make me turn into a freeze and kill you again, Joshua. Yeah, so the, the boat's leagues from the sea being thrown around, which actually makes a lot of sense. Um, so these are all blocked off, which I assume we'll be going to eventually anyway, so we'll just keep on the main path. Oh my god, it's Tonbury's. Whoa, Tonbury Creeper! Whoa! Do I have photo mode again? What was... How do we access photo mode? It's on one of these weird ones, isn't it? Hang on. The photo mode is accessible on this menu. Dude! That's cool! The Final Fantasy 16 version. Look at their little tails. I like it. They're pretty tall! Creatures consumed by their hatred. They're like as tall as Clive almost. Everything save the sharp knives, it seems. He's coming for me. There you, go. you can see the knife. Oh, okay. I see. I see it. I see the vision. Uh, so I almost got eviscerated. I was trying to see if I could perfect dodge the knife, but they're a little too slow on the movement. That's embarrassing. <laughs> Interesting design. I need to get my... Uh, I need to change to have more Odin abilities. So I can start building up my meter again for Zun Zuntetskin. And my mind blown the other day hearing uh, a word that I've always said Zantetsuken as Zantetsken uh, in Rebirth. It's going to take me a little while to adjust to combat once again, you know? Yeah. I feel so rusty. play. <laughs> Here we go.
barely did anything. Yeah! It's coming back to me now. It's coming back to me now! I remember how to fight! <laughs> Should probably activate my limit break. God, that's a lot of health. The fallen orb. Um, that went all right. I can smell the sea. It's not far now. How will we reach the surge? We'll follow the coastline north. There's a bridge that'll take us across to the Cape. It's so cool to see it so much closer that it's like a wave frozen in time and not frozen in ice, which is what we assumed way back. Ooh, Adamantus. I don't, I, I don't think that should be allowed. If you're still actively in combat Might with the thing... about the Ray of Light? It's what prevents the Surge from being reclaimed by the sea. And Walius by his people. There you go. Um, yeah, as soon as that happens, it goes back up to full health. I don't have my limit break anymore. Yeah, you lose all motivation to do that fight. I'm like, all right, I'll just move on. That's so dumb. Especially when it's the enemy that goes that far out on its own. It should at least give you a warning that you're leaving the boundaries, right? You know? You said before that the child is bound within the surge. But you've yet to tell us how we're meant to reach him. I trust we won't have to hold our breath. No. The surge wraps around the cape without engulfing it. If we continue to its tip, there is a path down to the seabed. 
and the wave's origin. All right. It won't be the first dominant we've met at the bottom of the ocean. Very nice. The next main location of the Surge. A lone wave rises to eternity, cursed never to break, the hands of time having stilled the rage of its tortured creator. Alright. Let's get a good look at this baby. Not much further now. The path seems well kept. Do you and the villagers often come this way? Only me. Once every new moon without fail. It is my duty both as village elder and Walius's descendant. But surely no one blames you for what happened. Why should you bear the responsibility alone? You misunderstand. I do it because I want to. To show him that he isn't alone, and that there are still some of us who would see an end to his suffering. Suffering you will soon witness with your own eyes. I wonder how the sibling of the, the baby... ...quickly here. Left unattended, the path would be reclaimed in a matter of moons. If only the rest of the twins could have that luck, by the way, though. The rest of the twins would kill for this level of growth. Um, but that's the power of the icon in this place, I suppose. Um, what was I going to say? Yeah, I wonder how that sibling of the Leviathan baby felt when they were continuing on the bloodline, because you've got, like, the descendants of this baby being like, I'm older than this baby, but this baby is older than me. This way, Clive. God damn. That is so cool. Does the light point the way to the child? It does indeed. Wow. <laughs> oh, just like seeing all like the bits of water that are just here, like frozen in turn. To get to the child, we're going to have to release the surge, which means we're going to see that happen, right? Suspended in midair. Where they have remained untouched by time for 80 summers. It's... it's not right. No. It's not. At least that wave is headed outwards and is not going towards any major locations. Still, though. There. Up ahead. They cooking with this music, too. Down in the center. Follow me. Oh, wow. It's the Avatar. So you've got the blue on the forehead. He's still primed. I'll never forget my first priming. The fear. And I was old enough to understand what was happening. One can only imagine how this poor child felt. 
He is the victim of an unforgivable sin committed by people who saw him as nothing but a means to an end. He must be so frightened. Then I'll ease his burden. You don't mean... I'm not going to hurt him. Contrary to the tales, I don't go around killing dominance for no reason. What if I told you there was a way to remove Wallace's icon? I tell you, you were a madman. It's hard to believe, I know. But it can be done. Though, it isn't without its risks. Part of the icon remains no matter what. So, it might still come to violence? I don't know. It depends on the dominant. I've seen things end well, and I've seen things spiral out of control. But I do know one thing. If we turn our backs on this child, there will be no end to his suffering. And I think that a worse fate than the alternative. Don't you? Very well. Do what you must. And whatever happens, I will own the consequences. I'm sure this will go well. Don't be afraid, little one. Let me bear the weight. Okay. It, is it done? I think so. I can feel the icon inside me. But something's wrong. Angry. All right. Let's see what you've given me. What is this? The power of water. Clive has claimed a portion of the icon Leviathan's essence. I don't. I didn't think we were gonna get it right now. I thought it was gonna like something was gonna go wrong, and then we would have to get it later. But we have it. Attuning with Leviathan not only changes the elemental aspect of Clive's magic spells but also allows access to several new iconic abilities such as Cross Swell, an inescapable rush of water that pummels enemies from multiple angles. Leviathan's feet, uh, Serpent's Cry, can be used to summon to Clive's off-arm a sea-spitting serpent capable of dealing precision strikes to enemies at great distances. Pressing square in this state will unleash a tidal torrent, multiple bursts of water capable of forcefully knocking back smaller creatures, while pressing triangle will fire a powerful jet of water, a tidal stream, at enemies situated just outside melee range. The tidal gauge, using these attacks will deplete your tidal gauge, becoming unavailable when the gauge is empty. The gauge will slowly replenish over time, but can re be refilled quicker by pressing circle. Time a second press perfectly with the on-screen prompt to immediately refill the gauge, as well as earn unlimited ammunition for a short period of time. Okay, the tidal gauge is also replenished when successfully executing a precision dodge. While using Serpent's Cry, pressing R1 again while dodging will cause Clive to roll in the air, extending the dodge even further. 
Tidal Torrent can be used while by rolling. While rolling by pressing square. Okay. Only Leviathan's abilities are available during this battle. Alright, let's go. Is that Leviathan? Heretics. But a formidable adversary nonetheless. Ooh, okay. Okay, that's sick. Oh, hang on. Is it? Yeah, okay, I see. Oh, look. It has friends. Okay. <laughs> this is pretty sick. We've got water. I love the the dodge animation. Okay, that's fun to adjust to. Pericus slain. In an aqueous orb. It has been noted that in some early texts, our forebears would oft times refer to crystals as orbs. And while the use of all capital letters to this day cannot be satisfactorily explained, the term itself is most likely one scholar's interpretation of text transcribed from a much older language. This pale blue fragment taken from the body of the the Egi, the Egi, Pericos, however, is indeed an orb, and while nigh flawless and teeming with the wind, wild walls and eddies of pure life energy, by no means does it warrant rendering in the upper case. An orb! Is everyone all right? He seems calmer now. You said Walius was frozen in time. But he knew we were here. How? I... I don't know. He's never reacted to anything or anyone. Until now. The child has been bound for nigh on a century. If he has been conscious from the first, we must remove the seal at once. It's not that simple. I wish it were, but... There's more to this tale. It would be better if I explained back at the village. I see. Then let's return before it gets dark. I'm sorry, Walius. I will make this right. It'd be torturous if uh, Walius has been conscious, just sitting there angry that whole time, that rage just building. It's cool that we have Leviathan's ability to play around with now, though. Spoil for so choice. Part of Leviathan is inside you now, is it? Does it hurt? No. Not anymore, anyway. Good. Because I still have need of your strength. If you want to know the rest, we should head to the Witten Hall. Of course. Okay, the Witten Hall will hold more answers for us. Probably an explanation as to that mural on the wall. 
But I think that this is good a time as any to bring this first episode of our Rising Tide DLC to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great time getting back to this game. We're getting familiar with the combat and the gameplay once more. And we're learning more about Leviathan the Lost, which is its just so good that we're even getting this, you know, because I know that... This is probably the last of Final Fantasy 16 we may get, as much as I would love them to do so much more with this world that they have built. It's such a massive undertaking for sure. But I'm excited to see what else is to come and to also play around with Leviathan's iconic abilities. Thank you so much for joining me today for this episode of Final Fantasy 16, and I will see you next time. <laughs>